All right, here we go on to Mexico and Va Vasco with a bit of a job to do here, starting off on the attack, as you mentioned. Could be a little tough for them. Out the gates really quick, though. And they do beat GV for pace, which, you know, may not be the worst of strategies when you've just come off of a big break like that. Yeah, really good decision coming out here. Playing the timing on that mid-peak is going to be everything. GV, they just weren't ready for that at all. And now they've got the man advantage to work with. Still, the smoke cycle is going to come through from GV, blocking off that mid-entrance. And this is what you're going to see a lot of teams do on this GR side of the map. It's really just smoke walling that one main entrance into mid and waiting to see if they'll push through either the alleyway or through the sewers. So for GV, they've got the right idea, but they don't really have the strength in numbers this time around. And I'm curious to see if Vasco is going to keep doing that because playing off spawns on this map on the blacklist side is a really key way to try and open up mid before the other team can get there. Well, things certainly have slowed down since that point. Well, sooner or later, Vasco is going to have to go, and at the moment, it does seem like they're a little bit more interested in that A bomb site. Smoke for A main, though. Could give them the opportunity to work a little bit deeper in through mid and head toward B. Seven going to be playing solo here on the back of the B bomb side. No real support system if that push does come through. But it is going to be Vasco starting to work their way into what looks like a split on the A bomb side. The counter flash comes through as a fake towards B. The rest of these players now collapsing on the A bomb side. Silva's going to spot one. MG gets the kill. Action finds the other on the back of site here. Seven left in a one on three situation as the bomb goes down. And this is not going to be an easy one. Yeah, real tough ask. Hasn't uh, seen any action so far in this map. He's been kind of anchoring toward that B bomb site. And <laughs> there is action to show him exactly what it is like when they meet. 1-0 to start things off for Vasco. Obviously, great start. Yeah, really good start. I love how they're just positioning themselves and setting up to trade on the blacklist side of this map because it's not easy to do, but you can tell they've done their homework. They know all of these spawn timers and where they can get away with pushing earlier on. This time, though, GV goes for the full nade stack early on to stall that push, making sure there's nobody who can sneak out mid early on. The smoke goes down, and now they've got to figure out how to play behind this full wall of smokes here. Oh, well, I mean, once again, Vasco just stalled, but the difference maker is this time they have the numbers disadvantage rather than the advantage. FaZe, he just loves his XM, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, FaZe with this gun on this map is no surprise here, especially considering how close these aim duels are going to be. I mean, the arm doesn't have quite the value on a map like Mexico compared to a lot of the others. So I'm sure you'll see him the majority of this GR side either using that or an AK in his hands. It seems to be his kind of go-to strategy on this. And not a lot of other teams we've seen so far are willing to pull out that shotgun. But FaZe, he's had some good rounds with it. The problem is when you have to challenge a long angle on a retake, getting stuck with this gun, not so ideal. Well, this is looking like the perfect angle to use it. And SV. I find it a little bit difficult to even check this angle. Snox is working it from range. Awesome there as well. It's a much better looking round this time from GV. The response to losing that initial round, quite a confident one. And very quickly back to equalizing the numbers at one apiece. Yeah, and that's exactly what they need on this side of the map because it is very GR-sided, so I feel like for them, they're probably looking for a 6-3 half here. That's usually pretty standard for the GR team on a map like Mexico. So if Vasco can pull even four or five rounds here, they're going to be feeling like that's a pretty decent win on the way this map plays out. So moving forward, I feel like GV, they've got to bolster this down and keep playing like they did in that second round. Putting that early utility pressure, though, on the backside of mid, very key, not allowing them to just run out on them. And this is going to give them a lot of ability to control the timer as well. The smoke cycle usually runs the clock to about 50 or 40 seconds left before you can actually push through without a smoke. You can see action there, getting a little antsy to fight behind it, but it's so hard to find those blacklist openings on this map. I mean, the fact that they haven't lost a player just yet is actually not a bad sight for, for Vasco. 
But they haven't really been able to take any map control yet, have they? So, got to use those numbers wisely. A little bit of a change in approach this time around. Not going to work their way through mid. Seven is watching for their exit, but he's going to be taken down quite quickly by MG. So, once again, another man advantage for Vasco. Yeah, this is where the patience has to be there. Seven, he got a little bit antsy and overpeaked on that off angle outside of the sewers. And he's going to pay the price for it. Vasco just running down this clock, waiting to see they can, if they can find another using the same style of play, just trying to see if anyone is going to give them that chance at a free 1v1 because the advantage they have in this matchup is they've got the shots to bait out these players and win these 1v1s if they can make that happen. But here comes the smoke screen into mid phase. He's going to be left alone here, able to find one before going down. But look at this from Creeds and Snox. They swing right back into position. There's only 20 seconds on the clock. They've got the advantage, but action, he is still here. He grabs the bomb, works his way towards the B bomb site. There's nobody on B as well. They can still get this plant off. Yeah, has to push through a smoke, has been able to do so but Awesome is there to shut it down and MG now surely has no time to make this happen. Can't even land the shot onto Creed's and it was a wise move from GV to sort of cheat that rotate over to B just to catch the C4. If they hadn't been able to do that, if they had have allowed him into the site, the plant goes down. It's a two on two post plant. It's anybody's guess how that goes, but GV do just find that timing. Yeah, really good round from them, especially converting that from a 4v5 disadvantage. It really shows what they can do on this side of the map, but they've got to keep that ball rolling if they want to win this second map right now. It is going to be a lot of early pressure again on the middle of the map. MG looking for that pick in the sewers. This time it is going to be smoked off and played a little bit safer by seven. I like the repositioning choice here, not playing close up, just playing that off angle towards B. Now it's going to be up to Vasco to decide how they want to pull off this pressure play, but they've got five players in the sewers ready to go here, and it's only seven on the other side of it. Has changed his position up. But Quick Pete comes through and he's going to be forced away. So all the control outside of Sewers established for Vasco. They're not going to slow things down at all. They want to go straight into B7 and Phase here to defend with. Only the one kill coming through from the site defenders. Awesome is there to bring it back. But MG watching for the rotations. Whips out the pistol. Gets the headshot onto MG. And now it's on to Awesome in the one on three. Has the first bomb out in no man's land. Not sure what was happening there, but it's all good in the end, as Vasco will secure their second. Yeah, really good response there from them. I'm not sure what went wrong on that B bomb side hold, though I feel like GV, they had the advantage in how they were set up on that positioning. Vasco just getting the best of them in these two-on-two -two fights, and they're going to have to find a way to address this from GV's perspective. They're not winning these even number situations a lot of the time on the entries on the site, and that's gonna be a big problem moving forward, especially considering a 2-2, very favorable for the Blacklist side in this circumstance because it does lean to be a GR-sided map, so you can't really afford to be trading rounds if you're GV in this opening half. Yep, not a good sign. Once again, standard, the way things are playing out so far in this round. Vasco are exploring all parts of the map, though. This time out to the extremity toward A. But very slow early rounds on, uh, on this map, isn't it? Yeah, very slow here. Coming out from GV as well. Not really poking around for any aggressive plays. Not going for full mid control either. They're playing reserved, except for FaZe here. He's just pushing up all by himself, shotgun in hand, trying to actually full clear this angle, gets the kill onto action, drops into Alley, gets another kill onto MG. Just pure madness ensuing now as Snox picks up a third kill for the side of GV. Now Tuzin, he's left alone, awesome, comes in for the backstab, and somehow it's already just down to Tuzin and FaZe. Three kills on the shotgun, he gets it done, and that is a huge round over to GV. I guess you can see why he likes to pick it up. Probably the only player we've seen with any kind of individual flair in terms of the weapon selections. 
at this event so far. But has definitely been able to make it work. Still those two rounds from Vasco looking relatively threatening. And this time going quite quickly into A. The flash is just getting tossed over into the sights. It is a big choke point, but they're fighting their way in, barging their way, really. Like a battering ram straight into A goes Vasco. Seven trying to salvage. He's a one-man army himself. But now stuck post plan at the forklift. Silver's rotating across. Needs to help out MG. Uh, does tap that bomb. And so draws out the peak from MG. Seven doesn't quite clutch it. A good attempt. But good is not good enough, unfortunately. Yeah, really close round there. But at the end of the day, Vasco getting it is very big for their momentum now moving forward. Still keeping those rounds very even back and forth. Three to three. Three rounds left in the half as well now. And this is where GV has to try and pull off a decent lead to close out the half. Out of these last three rounds, they really need at least two of them, probably all three, to feel safe going into that next half that they've done their job in the first here on the GR. It is going to be a quick setup, though, in this round from Vasco. A lot of utility being set up for the backside of mid here to try and nade out anybody playing on that quad box position. It is Seven who does like to play there, but they're just narrowly missing with those utility placements. He's going to be able to get away with no damage dealt, but I like the initiative coming out from Vasco there. Oh, that looked like it was going to be a good nade. Didn't quite do too much damage to Awesome. But sends him packing back into the A site. Back to square one for Vasco. Do get the sense though that these faster plays have worked out really nicely for them. So it is a little bit surprising to see them defaulting back to a slower play. But I suppose if you throw that many fast plays in, in a row, it does tend to get a little bit predictable. Yeah, at this point, I think Vasco is just trying to create these unique situations and hope that GV is not going to be ready to deal with them. And so far, it has worked out pretty decently for them. Three rounds to three isn't too bad on this side of the map. And they're going to be putting that early pressure onto the midsection this time around. This time, though, GV not going to be holding any players to defend it, just playing a lot more safe and reserved on the sites. And this could be a good change of pace from them as well. I don't think Vasco is going to be prepared for three players sitting in the backside of Sewer. He's just getting tossed over by Vasco, but time is very much of the essence for them. Are they going B, or are they deciding to go pretty much around the world into A? Snox already taking a duel. Will eventually fall one for one, maybe not quite enough. They just want to take a bit more presence phase through that smoke. Caught one off guard, can't do much more than that, but even still, it's not looking too shabby here for GV. Creeds needs to ensure he doesn't make a mistake, very nearly did. Shots don't connect though for MG and GV have found another round. Yeah, you can tell the energy is there. Seven trying to get them riled up after that one to get that energy high so they can push forward and really close out a strong first half. And they are making it happen for themselves a lot more so than what we've seen from them so far, really on any other map here. So you have to at least give them that credit so far on Mexico. But this is where Vasco needs a very important round. If they can bring this to a tie and maybe steal the half away on the blacklist side, that would still be a huge implication for their luck going into the second half to probably pull off and win this one. But right now, GV, it's all about what they decide to do on mid control. This is where they've had a bit of a hit and miss performance. But as we can see this time around, they're not going to be playing anybody in mid. Once again, that nade sack, not going to connect. Four players leading toward the A side of the map for Vasco at the moment. Makes that a tough nut to crack. I mean, they're allowed to do that because Vasco hasn't taken any control of mid. There's just no pressure on B at all. So you can just leave that completely unguarded. When is Vasco going to pull the trigger? Yeah, it's so tough with that mid-smoke cycle still going down. It's still going to be 
another potential smoke they could throw here as well. I believe they've got one left to work with, even so. It is going to be Vasco, though, working their way into mid control, but there's not a lot of time to work with on the clock. They've already got to start pushing right after the smoke screen. Phase, though, caught on the gun switch. A crucial error. It's going to be a full clear on the bomb side if they can take down Creed's. Tuzin opens up with the double action, gets the follow up. Seven, now the last alive, already has two kills for himself and the bomb down. There's a chance he could do it. Look at this wrap, though, into mid. Surely that's been heard. MG looks like he's ready for it. Pete comes through. Lots of damage done, but Seven is now down to half HP, and Tuzan has to clutch this out solo. He's got 27 sec seconds left to get that plant, which will be given to him by Seven. Another clutch attempt here from Seven. We talked about how important those clutches were on sub base. Here's another opportunity, and most of them have gone the way of Vasco. Seven going to be peeking into Tuzan. Makes it easy. And Vasco with another round. That's a painful loss for GV when they consider they've lost two of the same kinds of clutches. They could be plus two rounds right here in the first half, and that would make a respectable looking scoreline. But the fact they've lost those two rounds, four apiece, I mean, you think four already for Vasco is a pretty damn good result. Yeah, at this point, Vasco's done a great job in this opening half. If they can get a fifth round even out of this, it's just kind of icing on the cake at this point, going to their GR side, where I expect them to have a, a lot better time compared to GV in this situation. So Vasco, they're going to be playing pretty split this time around, trying to figure out exactly how they want to navigate these smokes, maybe a little bit earlier on. GV, though, exhausting them a little bit sooner with that extra smoke onto the alley bridge as well. So they've only got themselves down to two smokes already. So that's a good sign for Vasco. They're going to have a little bit more time to work with on this execution, but they still have to be careful in how they take this peak out of the sewers. This is where a lot of teams run into trouble if they're not set up to trade properly. Running up your, foot, your way back out of the sewer. So, here's another nade lineup. Doesn't look to have quite connected onto seven, though. It was close. He was just backing away as they tossed it. Had they gotten it a little bit earlier on, they might have done a bit more damage. Pays once again with a big job to do in mid. And time running down for Vasco, so they're going to have to go. Yeah, it seems like they're going to go ahead and go towards this A bomb site. GV, they've got a lot of presence in this direction, but they still have to have that rotation through mid to provide the coverage. But here comes the counter flashes from GV. They know this push has to come in now. FaZe able to help Awesome secure that first kill. Tuzin answers right back with one. But they've got to get these trades rolling. Tuzin able to find another on the end. Cool. Silva takes down one through the smoke as well. Seven, he's caught in the corner, but he still gets the double kill anyways. Creed's comes back swinging, and the 2v4 is now down to a 1v1. And it's seven once again in this position. Yeah, he's not feeling too happy about it, I dare say, considering he's below half HP. Time is really of the essence right here for MG. He's not going to be able to slow down at all, but he has gambled correctly and gone to B. Whereas Seven has chosen the wrong site to sit at. And he's even going to take his time clearing that out as well. MG down to the pistol now. You'd back him probably to close this out, considering that HP advantage. Now, especially considering his opponent's position is known, Nate is going to buy even more time. And right now, it's really just a case of trying to buy that time. Seven spots him out. A little bit of damage, but certainly not enough. And Util going over the top. Well, there we go from Seven. Yeah, that's a huge round. I'm actually surprised, though, MG went in for that last-minute peak. If he went yeah. back into the alleyway, he probably would have won just on time alone. But I'm sure Seven is thankful he finally was able to close out one of these 1v1s because otherwise this would have been four 1v1s in this map already where he took the loss for his team. So definitely a big way to close out the half, at least securing the overall half score in their favor as we go into the side switch now. It is going to be 5-4 to four in favor of GV, but this is the big question mark in my mind. What are they going to do on this blacklist side of the map? Because this is a much more difficult side to start piecing together rounds on. Yeah, I mean, how big of a difference making will that one round be? Uh, at the very least, GV can say that they won one of the clutches. 
because the vast majority were going the way of Vasco in that first half. And now GV are the ones in the position that Vasco found themselves in, just stuck outside of mid behind a smoke. It's quite a slow map, really. Not much room for the attackers to, to do a whole lot until a lot of that util has been used. Yeah, it's, through the smokes on that one choke point. It's interesting to see how teams approach this because it always surprises me how this one smoke seems to keep most teams at bay and prevents them from pushing until that smoke screen actually goes away. Sometimes you'll see a team try and flash execute through it, but very often it's just them waiting for that opportunity for all of those smokes to be exhausted on the GR side and then they can go in. But at that point, it only gives you about 40 seconds to play with on the round. And as we can see here, GV using that extra time to maybe work their way in for this sewer position. But MG, he's got the pick set up, able to find one. The quick trade comes through from Snox VNC. He's going to try and hang on. He's called for the support here as well. He's just going to lay down some damage and get back onto the site. And this is a great call actually coming out from Vasco because even though they've lost the position, they haven't lost anything on the sites yet. Nope. And they still have that solid 2-2 defense as well. Not to mention GV is kind of sandwiched in between that. So if they focus their attention too much in one direction, there's the potential for a swing to come from elsewhere. So they're feeling a little bit under the pump at the moment, they're going to have to go. I think given time for Seven to sort of wrap around back toward A long, but they're not going to have a lot of time to actually make it work here. Smoke down toward B, might start to give the game away. The A defenders surely aware, and they are. Silver doubling down, it's just Seven left, and he's dealt with as well. Bit too easy for Vasco in the end. Yeah, a lot of that round just came down to the play call to give them that control outside of sewers and just anchor both of these duos on the bomb site. Once they made that decision, I feel like the round was just theirs to take away because GV, they were forced to execute from that awkward sandwich position and there was just no clean way to take control of either side at that point. I feel like maybe they would have had a better time if they went towards B, but now it's going to be GV going for the same play again, but a lot more aggressively. Action, able to find one through the double doors. He's able to fall off as well and get the gun switch. Now it's going to be up to GV to find the response here, but there's nothing to be had. Again, they are stuck in this trap yeah i really like the way that vasco is playing around this right they're happy to allow gv to get in there but they want to take a pick on the way out and they do and this time they do it cleanly without even losing a member so it's an even worse position to find yourself stuck in for gv yeah i mean they've got more time to play with that's nice but i'm not sure that the time is really a factor at the moment more so the numbers disadvantage and the inherent bias that this map shows to the global risk side it's not a great spot to be in here for GV, but they are, in a sense, gambling correctly to go towards B. And you'll see AKT action has a fairly quick rotate in that direction as well, if necessary. And Tuzin on an off angle. That does catch seven. It's a decent hold so far from Vasco and VNC. will get it done himself. Vasco not missing a beat on this defensive side just yet. And further reinforcing what looks like it could well be a 2-0. Yeah, right now for Vasco, they've made the right call in terms of how they're approaching that sewer aggression coming out from GV. I love the way they're just kind of allowing that to happen, but this time FaZe actually gets the perfect spawn to catch someone on the mid-cross. Snox does the same thing on the opposite side of the map as well, and now they've already got themselves a two-man advantage. This is a huge potential round for them, but Action, he's trying to spoil that fun here, but Seven, he's holding it perfectly as well. It's already a five on two, and this is exactly what GV needed. Yeah, that's really well done from GV. Again, like I said, those fundamentals you tend to sometimes not see from other teams are kind of on display when you watch GV play aware that the defenders they know are going to try to play def a little bit more aggressively when they're down numbers because they want to go looking for info they want to try to equalize the numbers make a little bit of miscellaneous play and find out timing but seven has it on lockdown so really well done from him and now gv slow things down i think at this point you know you probably just group up and try to hit a bomb site and expect to trade down see what vnc has to say about it two quick kills already starts to make this look a little more precarious for GV. Let's not count this one as over and done just yet. They're also headed in the right direction. They will be smoked off. Creed's as well catching VNC on that rotate, but Tuzin 
Yeah, he's not going to have much of a chance as now he's stuck on B and GV's gone back to A. So there was a moment there where Vasco looked like they could still win that round, but should be GV every day of the week now. Yeah, Tuzin winning this round would just be kind of insane at this point. Seven, going to spot him out, but Tuzin, he's already found one of the three, and this is where they've got to make sure they're set up to trade on the side of GV. If they allow Tuzin some 1v1 situations, this guy has been hitting those headshots all day long today, so they've got to be very, very careful here. Faze going to be spotted out. Tuzin, he gets another oh! one. He gets the one on three. Oh, my goodness. Vasco steal away the round in the two on five overall there, and that is not a round that GV could afford to lose. No, absolutely not, and that's a shocking display as well in the post plan. Unfortunate for GV, I mean, just as I have to give them credit earlier on in the round for watching for those pushes and, you know, ensuring that the numbers advantage doesn't get brought back earlier on, you have to say, Seven, why is he taking such an isolated peak, right? Why is he looking in a position where he can take a 1v1, right? Can they not just sit on the site together, play out the pose plant, trade each other down? I mean, that opens the door and granted, you still have to win a 2v1 there, but that's got to be a killing blow for GV. And Vasco uh, coming back with a vengeance. Numbers advantage in this round. They're not looking to let it slip. This has not been ideal from GV. Yeah, especially now the C4 is down in the back of the B alleyway. Seven is going to have to find a safe way to recover that. They are pretty much giving him that position, but this is kind of what they've done all along on the side of Vasco. They don't really care too much about contesting directly on the sewer exit here. They're just reluctant to even take that fight because it can be an advantage over to the BL side on that, but now it's all about how they want to approach this towards the B bomb site. You can tell Seven and Creeds are starting to head in that direction. There's only one player defending it, but he's got a nice angle here. Tuzin playing in that back corner might have a chance of going unchecked here, but this is really going to be on GV to find the openings because so far they haven't got around this half. Yeah, still some late round util here available to Vasco as well. He's going to just keep Creeds at bay in mid. He'll, in the end, opt to work his way across, as you said, towards B. Tuzin very safe in this position. Can't even just play for the post plan. Doesn't need to take a peek right here unless he gets cleared out. Looks like he will get peeked there in the end by Creed. They're doing their due diligence, clearing the site. But at best, that's going to put it into a two-on-two. Action, though, already working his way in the B alley here. He's going to be spotted out early on from Seven, who's going to be able to reposition here. And this is where Seven can do a lot for his team, just making the right call and how they approach these alley players. It's going to be everything. It's going to be Action, who's taken down by Creed's. Now Silva is left alone, and he doesn't have any time to work with here. And Creed's gets it done on the back of the bomb site there. And just like that, we're back to a one-round game. Yeah, a little bit of a better response this time around from GV. Unfortunate reality about this map for them is that you could probably put this down to like two, three individual clutches from Basco that are making the difference. Had that not been the case, GV might actually be in a position where they're in the lead right now and in, in a position to actually close this map out. But it still feels like it's Vasco's to lose for now. Yeah, right now, GV, it's still a lot of pressure on their shoulders. They've only got one round to match the three from Vasco on this side of the map. Vasco only three away from the victory here as well and taking this one 2-0. It is going to be Vasco putting a lot of early pressure as well into the sewers. They actually send three players to full clear this position, leaving VNC as the rest of them back off. So if it is a late player coming into this position, VNC should have the advantage there if that happens. But right now, GV, they are very turtled up, almost all of them just back towards their spawn. As has been pretty standard on that blacklist side. Not really likely to see too much aggression out from Vasco, at least certainly not any further than what they've already displayed in this round by pushing into Sua. No need to do anything too silly. 
Lots of utils still available for GV. And starting to run down for Vasco, but time's starting to come into play as well for GV. Yeah, only 45 seconds to go. The smoke screens should be fading soon on the side of Vasco, but VNC again getting greedy in this position. It's going to be Seven who finds him once more on the other side of it. Now they've got the five on four, 30 seconds on the clock. They're going to have to start pushing in soon, but they've got the advantage to do so. And that's the second time that Seven's got himself a kill from that exact same spot. So I dare say Vasco, if they push again, they'll be looking at that direction. Now, though, the hit comes in. MG, two nice shots with the Orm. Two Zin. A very long spray down there against Seven, but gets the job done. B has been, to an extent, cracked open by GV, but numbers disadvantage is not going to help them out too much. Green spots one, but this player's getting close to him on the side. Awesome! Clutches up in a big way for GV. This map is a long way from over. Yeah, GV doing some pretty big work, especially on these post plants on the B-bomb side, so I'm interested to see if Vasco might change their approach and how they hold down that bomb site because the problem they're gonna run into is MG solo holding that with an arm is a very easy thing for them to exploit if they're aware of it on the side of GV Esports. So I hope they maybe shift things around because the big difference you're gonna see between these two teams is Vasco's very dead set on running that arm on a very close quarters map, whereas GV, they don't have any problem just running five AKs or M4s in this situation, which I think could play to their benefit in the long term. Yeah, I do think one of the issues that Vasco is kind of running into as well is just maybe a little bit of over-aggression. When we're talking about these late-round situations, you can understand why they want to go for that push, but maybe it's still a little bit too early to be doing it when there's 40 seconds on the clock, right? You need to maybe be doing that 30, 20 seconds left when GV have actually properly rotated their forces off to commit to one side of the map. When there's 40 seconds still left, they definitely have enough time to continue to play that default before committing to an execute in one direction or the other. But that said, I mean, the clutches in this second half as well have been good for GV. Vasco getting a bit of a taste of their own medicine. And with the scores locked at seven apiece, it does still feel as though it is anybody's game Sure, the argument to be made that maybe it should be Vasco's, given the side that they're playing, but GV have been working hard in this second half, and it definitely does not look impossible for them to win the map from here. Yeah, this is going to be a really important round for GV to try and grab a hold of. Faze, though, he's got the shotgun in hand here. Not an easy one to make work on the executing side, but... He's been really good at actually opening up some of these sites with it before. So we'll see if he can make that happen here and now. Silva going to be holding the backside of the mid ramp, waiting to see what comes through. GV grouping up for the split push onto the A-bomb side. It's going to be only him and Action to try and lock this one down, but they've got the angles to try and make that happen. Well, that's a lot of you two getting tossed in, but no one spotted Silva just yet. So he gets the chance to strike for two. Awesome. Has a lot of work to do here. He's already traded down two of his teammates, but he'll have to do the rest of the job himself alone against a couple of members. They've been given time to get in onto the site. Wins the first duel. Doesn't get a chance at the second. Can't turn around in time. And Vasco will get their eighth. And just as GV feels like they are clawing their way back into this fight, they're now a step behind again. Yeah, it's got to be a bit disappointing, though, how many of these rounds have gone against them just purely in 1v1 situations that they've lost because if they had gone either way a little bit more consistently than mostly in Vasco's favor, this could be a much different game on our hands. But you've got to hand it to Vasco for keeping that composure and winning, I think, all but one of the 1v1 situations we've seen on this map. It's going to be Snox, though, who actually takes a lot of early damage, gets a little bit pummeled by that nade. And they're going to have to play a little bit safer now. But with that smoke screen down, this is where Vasco has that time and comfort to reposition and go for some early picks, pretty much however they see fit, because GV has pretty much established in this half that they don't want to push through the mid-smoke. And if they're not going to, they're either going to wait out the clock or they're going to go sewers. There has definitely been a, a lot of waiting out the clock going on in this uh, map so far. I do wonder if, you know, is there a 
a better way to use the time on the attack than just sitting outside of mid. You know, maybe do you clear? Do you look to clear out sewers? Do you look to try to take a little bit of a peek in sewers, and then reroute yourself back toward mid? Because you're just not really going to get a whole lot done toward mid. What was that? A bit of spam through the smoke from Awesome. Either right, way, one of the Vasco members down early. It is going to be MG looking for that follow up to respond. He knows Awesome's going to be playing behind the mid box. He's just waiting to see if he's going to make that mistake of peeking a little bit too soon. Snox as well, kind of dancing on the off angle here. Awesome, able to get that jump across and get out of the mid prep position. Now it's going to be up to Vasco to identify where this push is going to come through. GV, though, they don't seem to have a full decision just yet where that's going to be, but they are putting pressure on the sewer position. They've got three players grouped up and ready to go, but Tuzin on the other side of it means they've got to be careful. This guy's been hitting all of the shots today. Yeah, he also has the backup of VNC, who's also there to sort of help him out, but he's completely flashed, has given away his position with those shots. Now MG in for one only for Vasco. They're gonna head back in his direction, tries to get the quick shot with the scope, doesn't need it. Pistol comes out, action in a one on two. Everybody low at this point. Pistols out across the board, taps across there as well. This will have to be a tough one though, right? With such little HP, you can't afford to make a mistake. Yeah, he's got the HP to maybe make this work on the other side though. It's one bullet anywhere and they'll both be done, but the double peak comes through and GV again bring this one to a tie situation and it's still anyone's for the taking as we go into the final few rounds and you've got to really respect what GV's been able to do especially on these post plants on the B bomb side I feel like especially on that side of the map they've looked so good in the yep. second half so far yeah they've been rock solid in those post plants and uh, not a bad start to a lot of these rounds as well they've been finding a lot of opening kills a lot of peaks Vasco Need to have a bit of a look at that and ensuring that they're not kind of giving away free kills here and there. But we are back to the tried and true. Yeah, a little bit more going on on the defensive side this time around with that alley push coming through from Vasco, but not deciding to go any further. It's a very unique setup though, coming out from Vasco. They've got two players, Ali, three holding the B side of mid, but actually nobody in mid itself and nobody directly on the A bomb site. So if GV were to just rush mid to A ramp, there's really no coverage there for Vasco other than that late player that can help support a little bit from the double doors. So they're pretty exposed to an aggressive mid play here. It is a bit of a gamble, I suppose, from Vasco, but they'll be taking the guesstimate that GV is not going to play super aggressive or super quickly. They haven't been playing super quickly throughout this entire half. So it's an educated guess from Vasco that looks like it's going to pay off, at least for now. But how long do they persist with this alley position? And if they do, are they actually going to get much out of it? It, it does kind of look like GV could be headed in this direction. Face ends up getting himself just the one. That's early info for Vasco that the A hit is definitely possible, but still enough time for GV to go one way or the other. Yeah, they are going to move Tuzin into the double doors position to hold off the A ramp push. They still only have action directly on this bomb site, but it's the right call from GV to keep committing here and playing for that information. That flash is going to be pretty devastating as well, hitting everybody on the GR side, covering that sewer position. Tuzin, though, able to find the first. That's huge. GV, they've got to get moving. They're running out of time. Action gets the double kill, gets Whoa. the triple. A huge hold coming out of Vasco, and it puts them on match point. Yeah, critical round to be stepping up in. And you can see the difference that uh, the four on five does make. It makes it look so much easier for GV when they get that opening pick. But when the, the numbers are even, it's not quite so easy for them to make their way into those sites. This time it was four on four after that exchange in Alley. And just look a little bit lost getting into that A site without the numbers advantage. Now a lot of heavy mid presence out from Vasco that is not going to be challenged by GV. And here's a chance to seal the deal and make it the 2-0 that Vasco are looking for. 
10 to 8, it would be the closest map we've seen so far that obviously didn't go into OT because we did have an OT last night. And I'm sure that's the result that Vasco is keen and eager for. Yeah, at this point, it's going to be up to them to close it out under the pressure of the situation. GV, though, this could be the potential life on the line in this event if they go down here. So if they can somehow take this into overtime and win the map, it could be the start of recovering their potential at a playoff spot. So it's definitely a lot of pressure to deal with for both teams as they try and close out this final round of regulation. GV, though, they are running down the clock. They don't want to push through these smokes, so it's going to come down to a very late round execution here. As has been very much the case. But with three players in mid, this is uh, an awkward spot to be in for GV if they try to make their way in that direction, particularly if Silva, Silva is able to open the account with a good initial shot. Has been smoked off now, though. And here come the flashes. Counter Util is out as well from Vasco, but Snox up over the top. Only good for one so far. BNC doubles down alongside action, and this is looking dire for GV. They need seven to clutch. He can't do it. It is 10 to 8. Vasco will secure the two and zero. And barring some shenanigans, that pretty much knocks GV out of the Crossfire Stars Summer Championship. What a way to close it out from Vasco. It looked like it could potentially see some overtime there. But at the end of the day, those final two rounds, they were able to establish perfect control and get themselves across the finish line. But you also have to give GV a shout out for the best map they've played probably so far as well. Very competitive, very close. But it all comes down to, I think, a lot of those late round situations. So many 1v1s in this map. Well, exactly. That was what I was going to say. I think the difference maker really uh, particularly was that first half. There was at least three one-on-one -on -one clutches. One of them went the way of GV, but uh, 